going on, MMA fans? I'm back to do my Tough 7 finale review video. Uh, I'm going to run over the four fights I did predictions on, then plus two fights that I uh, talked about briefly. Um, first fight of the night, and I believe this fight got fight of the night honors from the UFC, was Josh Berkman versus Dustin Hazlitt. Um, back and forth fight, you know, Berkman, you know, switching stances, using good power, good takedowns. Hazlitt, you know, using uh, mission control in, in one of his takedowns uh, that Berkman had on Hazlitt. Um, as far as the rubber guard, you know, working for an omoplata, working for an anaconda choke, um, and then eventually getting a guillotine choke, but uh, Berkman closing that round out very, very strong, back and forth with the combinations from both guys. Um, Hazlitt being very, very calm, and that's something that just goes to show in, with Hazlitt, I mean, he's matured as a fighter, he really has, and um, in the second round you got to see even more crazy stuff with a flying arm bar slash shoulder lock. Um, from Hazlitt and finishing the fight out with that. Um, he kind of got uh, Berkman off of a takedown off the fence and the clinch kind of threw him down into his stomach, wizard his way up there with a, like a flying uh, flying arm bar, you know, bucking his hips, throwing his leg up behind Berkman's head, dragging him down and then just kind of twisting his arm, which was almost like a shoulder lock. It really didn't even seem like an arm bar, but um, they, I think they claimed that it was an arm bar. Um, so look like a shoulder lock to me, but armbar slash shoulder lock. Dustin Hazlitt wins in the second round. Wow. Um, you know, his jiu-jitsu was so underrated, and it just goes to show where he has come along as a fighter. He's gotten better and better, um, and, you know, it showed in this fight. Uh, next fight was uh, uh, Diego Sanchez versus Luigi Ferravante. Um, Luigi had some really good takedown defense in this fight. Um, they had some okay combinations. Um... You know, Diego really has come along in his stand-up, and it showed in this fight. He had the better of the combinations, the better of the uppercuts, the better of the leg kicks. Um, he had a couple takedowns, but Luigi got up out of them. Um, and it seemed like Luigi, like, twisted his ankle um, in the second round. It looked like a little bit, and he was just kind of a little bit more fearful of trying to put, you know, power into his punches when, you know, he's throwing. And, um, you know, Diego in the third round lands with a, a left high kick and with a flying knee and then drops Luigi and just pounds him out and stops the fight. Um, if he hadn't stopped the fight, I think Diego would have won a unanimous decision. I mean, he was pushing the pace, landing more, better combinations. But he stops the fight and wins in the third round via TKO. Uh, next fight, Jeremy Stevens uh, versus Spencer Fisher. Um, like I said in my, uh, my predictions video, I thought that um, Jeremy Stevens was the real deal. Um, you know, he, he still has got some issues, and, and it, it showed in this fight that he still hasn't matured as a fighter completely. Um, he did a good job in this fight. He showed a lot of heart, but Spencer Fisher was just too much for him. Um, you know, there were a couple points in this fight where I thought Jeremy should have stayed in the pocket. You know, he's got enough uh, boxing skills that he could have stayed in there with Spencer Fisher, but as soon as he got, you know, hit with a couple of those combinations, he was like, oh, okay, I'm going to take this fight to the ground. And... Jeremy does not have exactly the best wrestling base in the world, and you know Spencer, for the most part, has decent takedown defense. Um, so you know he was getting out of those, you know, rolling Jeremy over, working ground and pound. Um, Spencer definitely won the, the first and second round. Jeremy, I think, won the third round based upon you know being more aggressive. Fisher was gassing just a little bit, and then of course the two guillotine chokes and the one real late in the round. Um, uh, but Spencer Fisher wins this fight convincingly, 29-28. Um, you know, it just goes to show that um, he's not out of um, out of his element. He's not uh, not a top fighter anymore. I mean, he's still in the middle of the division. And you know, look out, Spencer Fisher looks like he's back, and he looked pretty solid in this fight. So, uh, congratulations to Spencer Fisher. Uh, next fight, main event: Kendall Grove versus Evan Tanner. Um, you know, Evan just does not look the same. Evan does not look the same as he used to. He had cardio issues in this fight, you could tell. Um, Kendall did a lot better, a hell of a lot better in this fight. Um, he looked more, you know, relaxed, more confident, um, a lot better in the clinch, throwing the knees, throwing the Uriah Faber knee, as they call it. It's patented by Uriah with the, a guy, you know, holding on to the single, and you jump up and throw a knee, and then land back on the same knee that you threw. Um... You know, Kendall, Kendall was just a lot more um, calm in the clinch. Evan had one good Greco takedown. Otherwise, he was going for singles and doubles. You know, he just he wasn't comfortable in the clinch. He wasn't, you know, using the clinch game to his advantage, which is something that I thought that he would do against Kendall and be very efficient at it. But 
he was not efficient, and his striking has gone a little bit further south than even when it was you know, earlier in his career. Um, you know, he had a couple good uppercuts, but for the most part, Kendall dominated this fight, and, and it showed. Um, you know, Kendall, of course, cutting Kendall. Uh, Kendall, of course, cutting um, Evan. You know, in the clinch uh, by his eye, and you know, I, I don't know why this fight went to a split decision. That was pretty convincing. Evan Tanner really didn't do much except as far as a couple points in this fight. And you know, in the clinch, he was just kind of sitting there, but really wasn't you know controlling Kendall for the most part, from what I saw. But there were a couple parts where you know Evan looked like the Evan of old, and then it just kind of went down south. So. You know, Evan, he's got a lot more to work on. Hopefully the UFC will bring him back um, because I think if he really dedicates himself a little bit more, gets a little bit bigger because he looked a little small. I don't know if it was just me, but he looked a little bit smaller than he usually does at middleweight. Um, and, and really just work on his wrestling primarily and his Greco again. And, and maybe send him back up to Quest, you know, and, and let him get up there with Dan Henderson and Matt Lillen and work on, you know, just the basic stuff again and work on his submission defense, you know, it just all the stuff that he needs, again, to get back to the level where he needs to be, because right now, he just he doesn't look like the Evan Tanner of old. Um, two fights to mention, Drew McFedries, TKOing Marvin Eastman, uh, no surprise. Um, I figured that McFedries would win that fight. Um, you know, he's got more power. I think he's got better hands and better boxing skills than Eastman. Eastman, primarily a wrestler and a Muay Thai specialist. Um, and, you know, McFedries, I do believe, had the reach on Eastman, so... Not surprised there. Um, Lister stopping Horn in the first round. I thought that fight would go to a decision, um, but you know Lister just going to show just how talented he is on the ground. He's a great, great 185 uh, submission grappler, one of the best in the world at that weight class. Um, and if he would just get some cardio and, and some striking skills, he could be a scary dude. Um, but you know, I, I didn't get to see that fight. Uh, hopefully, he showed a little bit more in his striking skills, but probably not. That's definitely an area he needs to work on and his cardio. So um, leave me some comments. Construct the negative positive. Let me know what you think. And on that note, you guys, have a great day.